What's up, I'm Kyle, and this is a recap of the 2017-2018 baby season here at the Vervet Monkey Foundation, aka the Vervet Forest Orphan Rescue Season 1. A lot has happened throughout this past baby season, so I figured I'd condense everything down into one episode so you could get a feel for everything that went down. I mean, there was 36 episodes. That's a lot of babies, a lot of stuff to go through. So look out in the bottom corner of the videos, the top corners and the corners of this video, to see uh, the correlating episode number. So when I'm talking about things that have happened, I'll put the episode that they happened in, and then you can go back if you want to and watch that episode to get more information about what I'm talking about. Uh, also, please remember to like, subscribe, and share the videos with your friends, and watch through those advertisements because that helps us to make some money. And we've also finally got some t-shirts out for sale on teespring.com. Link is at the bottom of the screen and also down in the description below. So head on over there if you'd like to purchase some t-shirts to represent the Vervet Forest. Alright, let's get right into it. The first orphan of the season was a two-week-old baby named Groot, and let's just say he struggled at the bottle and his motor skills were questionable. Well, that was silly, wasn't it? A day after Groot arrived, we received Jolie. She was about a month old and was already eating solid foods and was a decent climber. It wasn't too long before both babies were moved over to Disneyland. Come on. It's fine. Look. <laughs> both babies were pretty terrified of their new enclosure and Groot wanted nothing to do with touching the floor. A few days later, Dave and I picked up another orphan named Eileen from a wildlife rehab center named Mahola Holo. Eileen was very tiny and very calm, and all she wanted to do was sleep, cuddle, and drink milk. Jolie and Groot also got their first bath. He looks like he's going on a date. Aww. After Eileen finished her quarantine period, she joined Groot and Jolie in Disneyland, and they all became quick friends. Next up, we received Mo from Swaziland. Mo was cute, playful, and a sweet little dude. Immediately after Mo, Dave and I picked up a six-week-old Peggy from a couple in the parking lot of a nearby gas station. Peggy wanted nothing to do with anyone. Peggy screamed and cried the whole way back to the VMF. She also screamed all day and all night in the baby cabin. Yeah, when Dave came in, he, he took her out. <laughs> and while Peggy screamed her head off, Mo didn't have a care in the world. He slept through it all. Look, Mo's awake. After a couple of days, Mo and Peggy were moved to Disneyland. Mo got on with everyone very quickly. Peggy, on the other hand, kept screaming. Jo Lee was the first to console Peggy, and it was the beginning to a great friendship. All the babies, except for Groot, began to learn the feeding cage. Uh, that's not her. Do you want me to put her hands in? No, she's on the roof. Peggy's over there. Oh yeah, of course. That's, that's the yeah. one. Jolie and Peggy were then moved to the Coco Troop intro enclosure to meet the moms through the fence. The females and juveniles in the troop were very curious, since these were the two first orphans of the season, and the babies, as per usual, were pretty cautious. Do you reckon we should sit closer to the fence? Mm. But it didn't take too long for the babies to find their confidence. 
Meanwhile, back in Disneyland, Mo and Groot struggled to learn the feeding cage. Groot was not pleased about having to go into the feeding cage to drink milk, and he threw a pretty epic temper tantrum. Over the hip, look over here. He's done it so many times today, he knows what to do. He's just tired. He looks very tired. He woke up out of his nap and wanted yeah. bottle, and bottle was nowhere close by. <laughs> Not too long after, it was time for Jolie and Peggy to meet their foster moms face to face. Luca was the first mom to groom the babies. Once they were calm, Panicure joined them. Next up, Mo, Groot, and Deline got to move over to the Scrow Troop intro enclosure and meet the moms through the fence, and everything went great. Dave and I then fetched Savannah from Maholoholo. Around this time, Groot got diarrhea and had to be moved back to Disneyland by himself. The next monkey to arrive was little Jerry, the baby with the broken foot who became the star of a Dodo Comeback Kid episode. The foster moms got to join Mo and Aline in the Scrow intro enclosure. But the moms were not too interested, until a young female named Buffy took charge. Even though the babies were unsure, Buffy handled her business. This was Buffy's first year as a foster mom. Zubana and Jerry then joined Groot in Disneyland. Groot was very happy to have friends to play with. Jerry's foot was healing up well, and her bandage was being changed daily. Then, a few days later, we received the majestic Merlin who had been found alone in the bush. Merlin was a real mess. He was malnourished, had no bottom teeth, and was absolutely terrified of everything. Over in Coco Troop, Jolie and Peggy were doing incredibly well. Around this time, Groot decided that he was boss of the babies. That is Merlin hated everyone and wanted nothing to do with anyone. Next came Joby. He was about two months old and came from the town of Zanin. Merlin was moved to Disneyland, but because of his weak state, he was isolated to a back room. Jerry was finally beginning to move around on her own, despite her big club foot. A few days later, Merlin got to join the other babies, but he still didn't want anything to do with them. Once in Disneyland, Joby spent a lot of time drinking, eating, and crying for his mom. Next, Dave and I picked up Dylan, a young boy who was found inside of a cow corral. Groot and Zabana moved to a scrow intro enclosure beside Eileen and Mo and got to meet the troop through the fence. Of course, not too long after Dylan, Dave and I picked up a little girl from Hoodsprit. He's hiding. Let mommy go. She was named Dee Dee and had been found in the toilet of a local restaurant. Dylan, Merlin, Joby, and Jerry also were all doing great in Disneyland. And then you just rolled in. You're done with the whole thing and Merlin was finally coming out of his shell and playing with Dylan. Groot and Zabana got to meet the moms, and it was a rough morning for the nervous babies, but a calm female named Bernadette won them over in the end. This face is absurd. 
Dylan, Joby, and Dee Dee were moved to the Goliath Troop intro enclosure, where they met the moms through the fence. Jerry was finally bandage free, and Jerry and Merlin began to form quite the friendship in Disneyland. I didn't know he was much of a hugger. Then, out of nowhere, on Christmas Eve, we received a severely injured baby monkey named Stick. Stick had been attacked by a dog. Because it was a holiday, none of the vets were open. A few days later, we were finally able to get to the vet, and Stick had a pin placed into his broken leg. Dylan couldn't cut it in the Goliath Troop intro enclosure, and so we moved him back to Disneyland, which he didn't really seem to mind. Stick was doing great post-surgery. Dave and I then fetched another baby monkey. This one was named Nora and had been kept as a pet with a family for a short amount of time. Everyone must wear their safety belt. Hmm? The cops don't stop us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right after Nora, we picked up another orphan bird. This one was several months old. He was named Elliot, and his mother had been killed by eagles on a game reserve. Jerry was moved to the Goliath intro enclosure where she took Dylan's place and joined Joby and Dee Dee. Nora was moved to Disneyland and was glad to make new friends. Merlin was doing much better, but Stick's tail was looking bad. Jerry, Joby, and Dee Dee got to meet their foster mom, Mrs. Gold. And although they were nervous in the beginning, eventually the baby settled in. Elliot moved over to Engelkey Troop, where he met the moms through the fence. Stick had to have his tail amputated, which he didn't seem to mind too much, but it was still a bummer for the little guy. I'd like to think so too. That's not what you do to your friends. And then we received another baby named Shemesh. Who are you talking to? Yeah. A week or so later, Elliot met his first foster mom named B. Sue, and he was overjoyed. So that, um, so you're going away Tuesday, right? Um, I believe it's tomorrow night, but I'm, with, I'm here all day tomorrow. Right. It's me and Bernie, I'll wait all day So, maybe you can let another female in with B. Sue. Um, <laughs> preferably not one that's too high banking. But, to be honest, they Shemesh joined Disneyland and bonded with Merlin and Dylan. But the pin was supposed to stay. Uh, yeah. we no, it's supposed to get removed, but it needs to get removed surgically, not yeah, yeah, yeah. by hand from the outside of the body. Stick got the stitches out of his tail. More like surgery in the sticks. How satisfying. Jolie and Peggy were living happy with Panikir and Luca. Groot and Zabana were doing great with Bernadette. Dylan moved over to the gizmo intro enclosure and finally became the confident little monkey we all knew he could be. Then back to back we received a big-eared baby named Benjamin, a little screamer named Hannah, and a shy little boy named Timothy. He's with your quarantine mate. Eventually, Nora and Shemesh moved to the Sov intro enclosure and got to meet the moms through the fence. Hannah, Benjamin, and Timothy all moved to Disneyland.
Hello. Jerry, Joby, and Dee Dee were all loving life in the Goliath intro enclosure. Stick made a visit back to the vet and we found out that his leg had healed up perfectly. So we protected this. This is the area that gives the problem. And we protected there. And Dylan got to meet foster mom Eva and they enjoyed each other's company. <laughs> Just as life began to settle down, we received a very badly injured orphan named Butterbean. Jeez. He had been attacked by male vervets. Immediately after Butterbean, we received another orphan baby female named Janet. She was very tiny and very shy. Things that happen. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hannah joined Elliot in the Angle Key intro enclosure and got to meet the moms and juveniles. Janet and Timothy then joined Stick, Merlin, and Benjamin in Disneyland. <laughs> At this point, Merlin had finally come into his own and was playing with all of the other babies. Shemesh and Nora got to meet their foster moms, Holly and Priya. We then received a temporary visitor, an orphaned baby baboon. While the baboon was visiting, Butterbean succumbed to his injuries and died of a pneumothorax. The baboon was then sent to a baboon sanctuary called Riverside. Benjamin joined Dylan in the gizmo intro enclosure and he took to his new mom faster than any baby I've ever seen before. Timothy and Merlin got to move to a D&D intro enclosure where they met the foster moms through the fence. Okay. And Merlin was pretty excited. <laughs> Stick moved over to the Angle Key intro enclosure where he joined Hannah and Elliot and he seemed to be having a lot of fun. We received a new monkey named Piwaket who had oral herpes. And it was finally Peggy and Jolie's big day, and their foster moms, Panicure and Luca, took them both out into the troop without any trouble. Timothy and Merlin finally got to meet the moms. Although the day started off rough, as with most meetings of the moms, by the end, the two little boys were infatuated with their new mom, Phyllis. We also received an adorable orphan duo who fell madly in love. Their names were Jeffrey and Trisha. Are you talking to that ringtone? Zabana got out into Scrow Troop early, but everything turned out all right. Groot went out into Scrow with Bernadette. Mo went out into Scrow with Polar. We also integrated the Angle Key babies. Hannah and Emma went out first, and Hannah got shocked when she tried to climb the electric fence. Climbing the fence. There you go, now she knows about fences. <laughs> Elliot went out with Bisu which meant that Stick was left inside all alone and he hated it. Finally, Stick got to go out and he caught up with Elliot and Bisou, sticking as close to them as he possibly could. Once all the babies were out, everything calmed down and the troop was ecstatic. <laughs> Jeffrey, Trisha, and Pieface all joined Janet in Disneyland and she was very happy to have new friends. Mm -hmm. Oh. Too much movement. Ah, mango. Should I try and catch her in a wrapper? But Jeff and Trisha got a bath and they were not too keen on it. <laughs> His face went, whoa. <laughs> Gosh, what happened? <laughs> then we picked up a little orphan named Maggie from Joburg. While Maggie was being picked up, Eileen got to join Scrow Troop with her foster mom, Buffy, and everyone was glad to have them out in the troop. Once Maggie was at the VMF, she got to meet the Angle Key Troop through the fence. 
I think Elliot's been stolen can be easy if I pick up. Piwakit then joined Benjamin and Dylan in the gizmo intro enclosure and he got to meet his first foster moms. He wasn't too thrilled about the whole situation, but eventually he calmed down and got to enjoy his time with his two new buddies. Trisha and Jeffrey moved to a D&D intro enclosure with a new ex-pet orphan named Conjo. Some of the females were sat by the door earlier and I made him sit in front and he just screamed around the Janet took up residence in a Scro intro enclosure and got all the love she ever wanted from foster mom Polar. Maggie met Theo and Jesse and she seemed pretty pleased with the whole situation. But then Trisha got thrush, so Conjo, Trisha, and Jeffrey had to re-enter quarantine in the baby cabin. That's a shame. Little sad duck face. Once Conjo was confirmed to be healthy and free of thrush, we moved him over to the D&D intro enclosure with Merlin, Timothy, and Phyllis. But things got a little bit hectic. <laughs> Once Conjo was in the enclosure, everything calmed down. The boys played a bit, and Conjo even got groomed by Phyllis. Trisha and Jeffrey moved to Disneyland and were joined by a new orphan named Crystal. Piwakat finally found his place with the Gizmo moms and he settled down. Maggie got to join Engelkey Troop and everything yeah. was great. I look very similar. Yeah. Theo just looks like a big scruffy rat at the moment. <laughs> he was so small. Nora and Shemesh got out into the Sov Troop early because the alpha female Acorn dug a hole under the fence and the moms snuck them into the main enclosure. It was too early for an integration, so staff trapped the babies and their moms in an intro enclosure and transferred them back to their proper home. Yeah. We got the other baby! Yeah. <laughs> right as we thought the season was winding down, we received another orphan baby vervet monkey, an ex-pet named Kobe. Who is that? Jeffrey and Crystal were moved to the Coco Troop intro enclosure and they met the moms through the fence. Hi, package deal babies. Oh, hi. Where are you? Look, that's Casanova. She could be your mom. And the taller head. Yeah. Brownie, you're too old to have a baby. Why? It might break her. Trisha joined the boys, Benjamin, Pieface, and Dylan in the gizmo intro enclosure and took to the moms very quickly. The D&D babies, Joby, Jerry, and Dee Dee, then went out into the troop with their all-star foster mom, Mrs. Gold. Soon after, we received a new orphan named Lou, who had to have patches of her fur removed because they were covered in sticky grass seeds that were making her itch. She likes to sit up high. Uh, she's a monkey. Almost. 
Then we moved Kobe in with the D&D boys, Merlin, Conjo, and Timothy. But Kobe was a bit of a jerk and was very aggressive toward the other babies. What is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love him so much. <laughs> Nora and Shemesh went out into Sov Troop officially, but Acorn, the alpha female, caused a ton of drama when she tried to steal Nora from Holly. There were a couple of fights and tense moments, but in the end, everything calmed down and the babies were back with their respective mothers. A couple of weeks after all that excitement, Crystal and Jeffrey got to meet the Coco Troop foster moms. It was a bit of a rough introduction, but in the end, Crystal found comfort in Luca, and Jeffrey found friends in Moki and Peggy. So the babies can come and go as they please. Jeffrey's having so much fun now. Who's Jeffrey playing with? Peggy. Uh, Peggy. And then she looks so different, Moki now. She looks much better. A few weeks after that, it was time to let the D and D boys into the troop, but this integration did not go well. She looks like a saint right now. Merlin went out first, and everything was just fine. But when it was Kobe's turn, everything went wrong. Kobe ended up being bitten and climbing out of the enclosure. Is that crushes? Let's crump it. We also tried Lou with Acorn in Sov Troop, but neither of them wanted anything to do with each other, and that didn't work out at all. We received two more orphans very late in the season, Mr. Miyagi and Dumbo. Mr. Miyagi was doing great, but Dumbo had been hit by a car. Merlin was loving life out in D&D, &D, and the next time we tried to integrate the other boys, everything went fine. Around that same time, the Gizmo babies, Dylan, Trisha, Benjamin, and Piwaket, all got to join the troop with their foster moms. A few weeks later, Crystal and Jeffrey got to join the Coco troop with their foster mom, Moki. Mr. Miyagi moved over to Angle Key Troop and got to meet foster mom Jesse and her son Theo. Janet and Lou were adopted by Polar and taken out into the main scrow enclosure and the troop was very happy to have them. About two weeks later, Dumbo was joined by our final official orphan baby of the season. Her name was Megan, and the both of them got to meet the foster moms, which neither of them were too interested in. We got a very unexpected visit from a Caracal, who had to be darted and re-released into the wild. Um, if we can just take this other blanket, yeah? Um, just take the blanket. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi integrated into Engelkey Troop alone and had a rough time. And Whisper's still with him. <laughs> but he eventually found Jesse and all was well.
Finally, to top it all off, Dumbo and Megan went out into sickbay troop on their own. God, it's gonna happen again. Uh, suspense. Don't do it, Megan. Oh, here it comes. Despite a few tense moments, everything worked out in the end for them, and the last official babies of the season ended up loving their new life in the trees. So that's everything that happened during season one of the Vervet Forest Orphan Rescue. It's pretty wild, right? I hope I've inspired you to go back and check out some episodes that you might have missed or just to catch up on things that you enjoyed that you saw in this episode. I've also got a lot of new shows that I'm working on coming out from a 360 tour of the VMF to Vervet 911, which is gonna be all about the rescues and rehab that we do here, to some top 10 videos, to a uh, comparison video of the babies then and now to an update video about how the babies are all doing out in the troops. Lots of content coming your way. Also remember to check out that Teespring shop and that photo shop, uh, thevervetforest.com. Those links are in the description below the video and you can purchase photos and t-shirts and bags and mugs and anything you want from there. So it's pretty cool and I urge you to check that out to help us out. Um, but otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.